miracle and sort of wrap things up here. If we define a miracle as, as a million one odds, think about how much data that comes through our senses every day. We see and hear things happen about, let's say, one per second. And let's say there's 30,000 seconds in an eight-hour day, if you're paying attention, let's say, for eight hours in a day. That's a million events per month. Of course, 99.999% of these are totally insignificant. But you would expect about one miracle to happen on average once a month. And with the confirmation bias, you'll remember the hits, forget the misses, you remember the unusual, you forget the usual. Or death dream, same kind of calculation. Now, this is a typical question I get in the Q&A. Okay, how do you explain this, Dr. Kermer? I was uh, asleep one night. I woke up at 3 a.m. I had this terrible, terrible nightmare. My, my, my grandmother had died in my dream. And, uh, oh, it was so upsetting. And the next morning, my mom called and said, oh, Grammy died last night. Oh, no, when? About 3 a.m. Oh, my gosh, you know. How do you explain that? All right, let's think about that for a second. Uh, we all dream every night. Well, let's say, uh, conservatively, you have only five dreams a day. You actually have more than that, but that's 1,825 dreams a year. Let's say you only remember one out of ten. That's 182 and a half dreams a year that you remember. It's 295 million Americans, so this is a slightly older calculation now. It's 53.8 billion remembered dreams a year. Now, according to the sociologists and anthropologists who study this, we all know, each of us knows about 150 people fairly well. That's a network grade of 44.3 billion personal relationships. Then I took the annual U.S. death rate, that's, uh, that is uh, all causes of death, all ages, it's .008, or 2.6 million people a year die. It's inevitable that some of those 53.8 billion remembered dreams will be about some of these 2.6 million deaths among the 295 million Americans and their 44.3 billion relationships. It would be a miracle, in fact, if some death premonition dreams did not come true. Here's a show you will never see on Oprah. Next on Oprah, we have this woman who's been having these dreams every night. Terrifying dreams. And so far, not one of them has come true. But stay tuned, because you never know. So the problem is we did not evolve to understand million to one odds. And uh, one more fun video clip. Here's an example of a guy who just does not understand million to one odds on an intuitive level. So let's check our volume. This might be a little loud if you had it cranked up. I want to ask you a question. Straight out. Flat out. I want you to give me an honest answer. What do you think the chances are of a guy like you and a girl like me ending up together? Well, the way that's difficult to say, we really don't hit me with it. Just give it to me straight. I came a long way just to see you, Mary. Just the least you can do is level with me. What are my chances? Not good. You mean not good like one out of a hundred? I'd say more like one out of a million. So you're telling me there's a chance. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Guys are especially uh, bad at that. <laughs> In that particular context, I mean, uh, there's actually research on that, believe it or not. <laughs> if somebody from the opposite sex it, it, it interacts with you in some way. Do you interpret it as a as a as a, a come on signal or not? Guys are like ten times more likely to take cues as yes, I will. When she really meant no. <laughs> um, a fun example of the confirmation bias. When I was in uh, high school, uh, there was this whole mythology about Paul McCartney was dead. He was killed in a car accident. Uh, he hadn't noticed that the lights had changed. Uh, the people stood and stared. They'd seen his face before, but no one was really sure if he was from the House of Lords. It was all there in the music, the album covers, especially the uh, Sgt. Pepper's uh, cover that looks like a, a sort of a funereal setting with the old Beatles on the left and the, and the, and the new Beatles on the right, and the guy with his hand above Paul's head is a sign of death, it's sort of like a casket here. Or the Abbey Road, where uh, they're all shoot, they all have shoes, but Paul is barefoot, and they're out in step, and he's out of step, and he's got a, a, a cigarette, which is a sign of death. That turns out to be true. Uh, and, uh, and John is dressed like a, a, the minister, and Ringo like the pallbearer, and, and George like the uh, grave digger. And uh, there's something in the back there. Look at that Volkswagen there. If you blow that up, 
It says 28 if. Paul would have been 28 if he had the guy. If you look on the back of the Abbey Road, Alvin says three beetles. He got three beetles. They're giving us clues. It's all there. There's the uh, skull. It's a skull. See that? And it's Paul's skull there. Uh, these are all from a web page called paulisdead.com, of course. Um, and, uh, and so these are, again, prime examples of patternicity, especially if I tell you what to look for. Uh, and a nice example of both a, a visual and auditory priming, priming the brain, uh, is uh, the best example of this sort of backward masking from rock music. You play rock songs, there's several Beatles ones. You can play backwards, like uh, Revolution Number no. 9 is Turn Me On Dead Man. Yes, you can Google Turn Me On Dead Man and you'll get that. That's what I titled this essay. But this is, um, so here I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a sort of an example of this. Uh, from what is uh, uh, arguably the best rock and roll song of all time, uh, Stairway to Heaven. Uh, I'll play a part of it forward for you, and then I'll play a part of it backwards, and you have to see if you can hear the hidden messages, <laughs> the, the patternicities in there. Okay, here it is, forward. forward, frankly. <laughs> but, but when I was in high school, this was a deeply meaningful song. Okay, so here it is uh, backwards without the visual prime. This is, you just have to see if you can hear the hidden message. See if uh, now it comes a little clearer. <laughs> Would you have any problem kissing our models today? 